On Wednesday, January 3rd, 1923, Cowlitz County Commissioner-elect Benjamin Barr sat in the back seat of his vehicle when his driver, Arlie Millard, felt an unsettling shudder through the springs in his seat. Miller glanced nervously at Barr through the rearview mirror, unable to move the vehicle forward. The pair were stuck atop the Allen Street Bridge here in Kelso, Washington, when seconds later, it all came crashing down, resulting in the deadliest bridge collapse in Washington State history. I'm Eric Ebel, your fearless field guide to Washington State history, heritage, and culture, and this is Washington, our home. begins at the Cowlitz County Historical Museum, which is just blocks away from the site of the 1923 bridge disaster. We're in Kelso, a medium-sized city in Washington that has its roots in the timber and fishing industries. Platted by a Scottish surveyor in 1884 and named for his hometown in Scotland, Kelso incorporated in 1889, the same year Washington became a state. By 1904, the people were ready for their first bridge over the Cowlitz River. Unfortunately, it collapsed two years later after heavy rains, so they built a second bridge with a draw span entirely out of wood and held together with metal cables. That opened in 1907. River traffic up and down the Cowlitz necessitated a drawbridge, which meant tall towers had to be constructed on either side to hold the counterweights used to lift the bridge. Almost 10 years later, the effects of weathering and daily use required the Allen Street Bridge be renovated in 1915. But instead of replacing the old timbers with new ones, city officials decided just to lay down new ones on top of the old ones, nearly doubling the weight of the draw spans. After a particularly brutal storm in December 1922, the Cowlitz River had swelled to flood levels, and the stage was set for the deadliest bridge collapse in state history to unfold. Flooding was nothing new to the people of Cowlitz County. Their rivers overflowed their banks in 1867, 1894, and would flood again in 1933, 48, and 2006. Since the December storm had dislodged so much material upstream, all that timber came rushing down the Cowlitz River, further weakening the bridge that some were already too scared to cross. As the log jam piled up in the first weeks of the new year, workers started returning to the lumber mills after the holiday. Many of these workers were transients, though not by today's definition. In the early part of the last century, transients would travel from town to town in search of whatever work they could find. Most of the folks on the bridge that day were coming home from their jobs at the Long Bell Lumber Company just on the other side of the river. There was a traffic backup due to a stalled car on one end and a team of horses on the other. So all of the cars started to pile up, and that was too much for the bridge to handle. Among those waiting for the traffic to clear up were Arlie Miller and Benjamin Barr, the latter of whom had just been elected the newest Cowlitz County Commissioner about two months earlier. Barr was quite possibly imagining his fledgling political career to while away the time until the stalled car could be moved off the bridge. But fate, it seems, never gave him the chance to realize that dream. Survivors of the disaster reported hearing a series of loud metallic pops as the twisted cables, straining under the weight, began to fail, snapping and viciously recoiling one by one. The good news is that pedestrians on the bridge heard the horrifying sound and barely had time to scramble to safety. The bad news, everyone trapped in their vehicles didn't stand a chance. When the bottom of the deck collapsed from underneath the Allen Street Bridge, it sent hundreds of people and cars and horses into the water. Those who weren't able to escape immediately were likely sunk in their cars, never to see the light of day again. As the draw span fell, it pulled the support towers down with it, raining tons of wood and metal down on top of those struggling to get out of their cars. Almost immediately, nearby boats, like the steamer Pomona and a half a dozen others, realized what was happening and cast off, hoping to save whoever they could find. When the bridge went into the water, bodies kept turning up all along the banks of the Cowlitz River for up to several weeks after the event. Now the steamer Pomona and other boats that were in the area actually came down into the water to look for survivors. The Pomona itself pulled out 40. 
Who knows how many other lives were saved? One life that notably remained in question was that of Benjamin Barr. Though the Pomona and other boats pulled out dozens and dozens of people who surfaced after the collapse, Barr couldn't be located in the hours following the disaster. The search for Benjamin Barr went on for days. They even published his name in the paper, repeatedly, looking for any sign of the council member. I went looking for any historical trace of Benjamin Barr, and the obvious place to look was at the Cowlitz County Historical Museum, where Executive Director Joseph Govednik oversees stewardship of the area's rich and storied history. That bridge collapsed in 1923, which was also a significant year in that our county administration building was built. 1923 is also when the upstart community of Longview was created. So a lot of things happened here in 1923. After coming up empty on traces of Benjamin Barr, I convinced Joseph to lead me the few short blocks to the site of the original disaster. We had to hop over a few busy train tracks that carried both freight and passengers on a fairly regular basis. Just on the other side was our destination. Almost nothing remains of the bridge that collapsed in 1923 and killed some 20 people. In fact, if you visit Kelso today, all you're going to find is the bridge that's currently over the river and this area right here, which is exactly where that bridge once stood. I had to climb down this steep bank to the river's edge to get a look for myself. Only there could I really assess the magnitude of the tragedy in Kelso that cold January evening. Today, at the site of the Allen Street Bridge collapse, there's really not much left except a little bit of debris, but occasionally you can find something like this. It's a nail that was probably used to hold the entirely wooden bridge together, and when it collapsed, a lot of it went right to the bottom of the river. Rescue efforts lasted throughout the night and around the clock for the next several days until it became clear that volunteers were no longer looking for survivors. Their frantic search had turned into a recovery effort. Since the bridge intended to replace the ill-fated wooden span was still under construction just next to the collapsed bridge, crews quickly turned it into a makeshift platform. They began using cranes to haul out cars, cables, and mangled pieces of wreckage from the river bottom. In the weeks to follow, there still wasn't an official count of the number of people who had lost their lives. Because of the winter storm, the visibility underwater was close to nothing. Still, city officials sent in divers to try to recover bodies. When that effort failed, they dynamited a three-mile stretch of riverbed, hoping that it would dislodge any bodies still stuck in the wreckage. The last body found didn't surface until six months later along the banks of the Columbia River, miles away from where the Allen Street Bridge once stood. When the cleanup ended, the third bridge, known as the Steel Span, was finished quickly to restore the flow of traffic. It stood quiet and unassuming for almost 80 years, until it was replaced in 2000 by today's bridge that covers both the river and the railroad. This sign affixed to the structure by the Kelso Rotary says Rotary Landing, but in fact it's not a landing at all. It's all that remains of the third bridge over the Cowlitz River. As I headed back to the museum, I decided to swing by the Cowlitz County headquarters just a few blocks away. Steeped in history, it's an impressive testament to local government. Councilmember-elect Barr never got to serve his term in office. His body was found among the wreckage as well. If he had lived, he would have spent his days here at the Cowlitz County Courthouse, which was also built in 1923, on land donated to the county by the city of Kelso. Back at the museum, I never did find a photo or official record of Benjamin Barr, but staff there helped me locate hundreds of photos and news articles about the deadliest bridge collapse in Washington state history. There's even an oral history recording made in the early 1980s of an interview with a doctor who treated the injured pulled from the river that fateful day. It's a fascinating story of hope and heartbreak and an amazingly authentic window into the history of Washington state. There's a lot more you can learn at the Cowlitz County Historical Museum. If you're ever in Kelso, I suggest you stop by and take a look for yourself. They're open Tuesday through Saturday, 10 to 4. They're alive with history and admission is free. Thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel and check out the blog at WashingtonHourHome.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and you can check out lots of great pictures from around Washington State at Flickr and Pinterest. Until then, I'm Eric Ebel, and I'll see you somewhere in Washington.